What's up everyone, it's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. Yesterday, the Mets got saved not only by Francisco Lindor, but by Starling Marte's right arm. Mike Yastrzemski hit one of the coolest home runs of the 2024 season so far. Yankee fans, they are trying their best not to lash out at Aaron Judge, but it's getting harder and harder as the days pass. And because Judge has been so disappointing, at the end of today's video, we're going to rank the most disappointing player at every single position, so stay tuned for that. All of that and more in today's MLB recap, we post these every single day. We recap every single game, so don't miss out. Also, be sure to use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off your entire order. And my code on Underdog Fantasy gets new users up to a $100 deposit match. They got baseball, golf is coming up pretty soon. Scotty Scheffler is probably going to take it home again, so use code Fuzzy on Underdog Fantasy. So let's see how Francisco Lindor and Marte's arms saved the Mets. But before that happened, Christopher Morel he walloped a no doubt three run home run off of Adrian Hauser, who, in my opinion, should probably be a long reliever for the Mets, but that's just me. Morel, he doesn't get on base a ton, but that's 31 home runs and 87 RBIs over his last 138 games. That's really, really impressive. So it's 4 0 Cubs when Brandon Nimmo and Starlin Marte started to come back with some RBI singles. Again, Marte was a big factor later on. Stay tuned for that. The former super prospect for the Mets, Pete Crow Armstrong, he legged out a weird double, and it's weird because technically it shouldn't have been a double. Pete, he scores Patrick Wisdom, and he should have been called out on the tag because the helmet does not count as an extension of the body. But the umpire didn't know that, and honestly, I didn't know that either. I thought he just pulled out a 10,000 IQ play. The Mets are down three now. Lindor, he stepped in as a pinch hitter for Joey Wendell, and Mr. Smile, he's smiling right there because he clutched up for a two run. I think it was a single or something like that. It's down to one run, and there it is. Brandon Nemo, he laced another RBI base hit. He's at 20 RBIs already. He has a 132 OPS plus since 2018. So we have some free baseball in this one. We're in the 10th inning. The Cubs are threatening on the sack fly attempt from Patrick Wisdom and Christopher Morel. Starlin Marte threw an absolute dime. They got him. Now, I hate to ruin the momentum, but the Mets lost the lead in the 11th inning. Magical. He doubled in wisdom. They're going to keep stacking runs with this Talkman single. Wait, I forgot that they're running on Starling Marte again. Magical. He's out at home, so it stays a one-run deficit for the Mets, and I miss this guy. Listen, as a Cleveland fan, we lose everyone, and I'm just happy that J-Ram decided to sign that extension and stay, but I wanted J-Ram and Lindor on the left side of the infield for their entire careers. Francisco clutched up for the second time in this game. His double to left field allowed Bader to turn on the Jets. He scores all the way from first. The Mets, they're back over 500. They're 16 and 15. Here we go, the Rockies and the Marlins. The Rockies are trying to avoid being swept, but there's Jazz Chisholm Jr. He kickstarted this game with an inside-out RBI single to left field. Miami, they grabbed another on a Jesus Sanchez sack fly, which was a big second run because being down 3-1 to one seems way worse than 3-2. to two. Jacob Stallings, he got Edward Cabrera, and Edward Cabrera was shocked. He shocked because he gave up a home run to a guy who has a career 79 OPS plus, and that was just his 25th career home run. It's okay, though, because Josh Bell, he sent one out against a righty, which doesn't happen a lot, but his fourth home run ties it at three, and then later, catcher Nick Fortes, he singled for the go-ahead. We're going to fast forward to the ninth because Colorado, they have two on and nobody out. Jake Cave, who was traded from the Phillies a few weeks ago, he bunted, and Maldonado, he threw it away, but Jesus Sanchez, he was covering, so he got there in a jiffy, and I think that Rodgers might have been able to score, but he stayed put. The runner at second did not see that, so he's caught a no man's land. He's tagged out. Miami, they got out of it without allowing a single run. And Maldonado, obviously, he's pumped up. Just like the Cubs and the Mets game, this one needed extras as well. Colorado, they're one out away from getting this thing to 11. Jesus Sanchez, he shot one the other way. And Jordan Beck, he couldn't get there. Miami does, in fact, sweep the Marlins. And Colorado, they've now lost five in a row. They've trailed in 31 consecutive games to begin the season, which has never happened in baseball history. Are the Rockies ever going to be good? Seriously, do we have to bring back Todd Helton and Larry? Walker they stink. Maybe they're going to pull a Baltimore in the next few years and hit on like five consecutive drafts in a row, but I don't know. It doesn't really seem all that likely. Speaking of drafts, Ryan Mountcastle, he was their first round pick back in 2015. He saved his first hit of the series for Carlos Rodon. Ryan's got five home runs. He's also hitting 290. Imagine if Ryan Mountcastle turns into a 280 or 290 hitter. He's going to be unstoppable. Jorge Mateo saved his first home run of the year for Carlos. He defeated that left field wall. He went 425 feet. He now has a one 
141 OPS plus. Please, baseball gods, let Jorge Mateo keep on raking. We need a diamond Mateo back in MLB The Show 24. Mateo's teammates kept on raking. Ryan McKenna, of all people, he tagged Rodon. That's his first of the year as well. Mountcastle knocked an alley after it got past Glaber, and Soto kind of bobbled it out there. And now it was just a full-blown blowout. Rookie Jordan Westberg, he wanted to make sure that Kyle Bradish was comfy in his debut off the IL. That is a two-run triple. And Westberg is almost hitting 310 with 21 RBIs. Baltimore, they're going to win easy. But I do have to show off Kyle Bradish's four strikeouts before we move on. Do not forget Bradish. He finished fourth in the Cy Young last year. And he had a crazy 2.3 ERA over his final 20 starts. That is a big-time addition to the rotation. This next game was really, really cool because Mike Yastrzemski, he was playing in the ballpark that his grandfather became a Hall of Famer in. If you guys don't remember, his grandpa is Carl Yastrzemski. He had almost 3,500 base hits and a near 100 career war. So he was him. Naturally, Mike, he goes yard. I just love baseball. The Boston Red Sox, they're going to try and tie it up. Rafi, he's at first base. Tyler O'Neill, he's been one of the best offensive outfielders in the game this year. He goes off the monster endeavors. He turned on the Jets. He actually does score from first base. He ties it up. Then we had an interesting bottom of the fourth inning. Jung Hoo Lee, he lost it in the sun. That afternoon sun can be absolutely brutal, but the young lefty, Kyle Harrison, he was able to strike out Zach Shore, and then Jaron Duran tried Lee again, but this time there was no sun. Lee, he laid out to save Kyle Harrison from going down a run. I also want to mention that Lee has been one of the unluckiest hitters in baseball to start the year, but I think a hot streak is coming. Harrison, he's out after five. He gets a lot of Chris Sale comps because look at this stuff. He struck out seven over five on just three base hits. Again, that's why he's called Chris Sale 2.0. Not that he's going to be better, but he just reminds us of Chris Sale. He throws gas and he strikes out a ton. The Boston staff did a great job to limit damage as well, but the seventh proved to be a key inning in this game. Tyro Estrada, he singled the go-ahead run. Patrick Bailey scores and Nick Ahmed, he hit a sack fly just for fun. Insurance runs are always nice, but Camilo Duvall, he didn't need it. That is save number six for Camilo Duvall. The Giants are trying to get back to 500, but I do want to tip my cap to the Boston Red Sox. They're 18 and 14, despite the fact that almost all of their best players are on the shelf. But I mean, hey. Everyone has injuries. I mean, Texas is playing without Cody Bradford, Tyler Maley, some dudes named Schreiser and DeGrim, something like that. Like, are they good? Scherzer and DeGrom, that's their names. And now they might be without Nathan Evaldi. We'll talk about Nathan in just a moment. Look, Ezekiel Duran, he exists. He did something productive. That's just his second RBI of the year. Evan Carter, he gets an RBI single instead of the third out. Marcus Simeon pushed home a third run for the Rangers, and this is what I was talking about. Nathan Evaldi, he was almost through six shutout, but his groin pinched on him. If you've ever had a groin injury, they are brutal. He's going to get imaging, so hopefully it's nothing serious. But if they have Avaldi, Scherzer, and DeGrom on the shelf, it's going to be a tough next few weeks. The Rangers ran it up to 6 0 after a three run eighth inning. Jonah Heim knocked in low. Jonkowski, who was pinch hitting for Ezekiel Duran, he played the final two runs. Texas, they turn a double play to wrap things up. They're now just a half game back of the Mariners for first place in the AL West. As a Guardians fan, I'm not going to lie, it's been a rough last week, and the team itself has played four consecutive extra inning games, and they've Lone lead after lead, so hopefully this one is an easier non-extra inning game. Sure, Andres Jimenez laced an RBI double, and Stephen Kwan used a crazy slide to score on a J-Ram sack fly, but Josh Naylor, who was on the on-deck circle, he wasn't helping Kwan with the dive. Later on, we had some more kind of laziness. Josh and his little brother Bo could not make the catch in foul territory. That set up a brutal rest of the game for the Guardians. I mean, Josh was saying, you got it, you got it. They looked at each other like, bro, you should have caught that. Altuve, he made them pay. His second chance loaded the bases up, and Jordan Alvarez, he didn't even have to do anything. The ball got past Bo Naylor, so it's 1-0 Astros, and Cleveland almost botched another play. Luckily, Logan Allen, he's out of it. That run was unearned. And in my little fuzzy opinion, this should have been called an error. So they got shortstops playing outfield for some reason. Arias, I like him a lot, but he straight up just did not catch it. Jeremy is credited with a triple, not an error. Singleton, he then did it, and of course it was with two outs, so he shouldn't have even been out there. Like, no joke, it should be 2 to nothing. The Jordan pass ball happened with two outs, so the Bo Naylor, Josh Naylor botched fly ball was a big time problem. Then the Arias botched triple allowed. Okay, I'm frustrated. I wanted to get my frustrations out, but the Astros, they were going to win regardless. Altuve singled in Jake Myers. Jeremy Pena, he was then hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Then former Cleveland prospect Yiner Diaz, he then dumped the bag of salt into the wound. He ran the score up to seven after his two run single. Houston is trying their best to climb back up the leaderboards and games like this. That's how you turn seasons around. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the most disappointing player at every single position to start the 2024 season. I don't think that Jackson Holiday or Aaron Judge were the most disappointing at their position, but I wanted to give them an honorable mention because these guys are ultra talented, but Jackson starting two for 34 with like 18 strikeouts, that's not gonna cut it, but he's 20 years old. They rushed him, Aaron Judge, 
I mean, he's 32 years old. He's not like he's 87. He's got six home runs, 18 RBIs, and a 331 on base. He's going to be fine. They're not the most disappointing. The most disappointing catcher in baseball to begin the season, someone who I like a lot, Bo Naylor. There's been some young mistakes that he's made. He also has like two base hits over his last five or six games. So when you're hitting 176 with a 63 OPS plus, I know that's probably what Austin Hedges would have done anyways, but we expect a lot out of Bo. He was insane in the second half. I need that Bo back, okay? I need WBC Bo Naylor for the rest of the season. Another honorable mention, Jose Abreu is not my most disappointing first baseman. I'm giving it to another guy, but I have to talk about Jose Abreu because technically him and someone else we'll talk about in just a second have been the least valuable players in baseball. Abreu, he's got a negative 1.5 war on baseball reference and a negative 20 OPS plus. Right now, he's in AAA. He accepted an assignment to the minor leagues, but he's not my most disappointing because he's 37 years old. He's a dinosaur. My most disappointing first baseman is Spencer Torkelson. How much leash is this guy going to have before he's sent back down to the minors? I know he was a lot better in the second half of last year, just like Bo Naylor. So they're going to give young players time and they're going to give them a lot of leash. But Torkelson is currently hitting 219 with a 70 OPS plus. He's not taking the walks like he should be. He's striking out a ton. Spencer Torkelson, you got to figure it out, buddy. Cole Keith signed an extension six years, $28.6 million, which is not a lot of money. The majority of the money is going to come in 2030. And that's actually weird to say out loud. Oh my God, I feel old. But if everything goes to plan, he should be making anywhere from like 60 to $80 million if he rakes. And right now he's hitting 160 with a 19 OPS plus. And defensively, what is he at? He's at a negative one DRS. So even defensively, he's been eh. Speaking of being eh, what happened to Alex Bregman? I mean, not too long ago, this guy put up Barry Bond numbers. I mean, from 2018 to 2019, what was he at? So from 2018 to 2019, I know it was the juice ball era, but he had a combined 157 OPS plus and a 409 on base. I know that's not technically prime Barry Bonds, but in terms of extra base hits and taking walks and not striking out, he was in that conversation. But to begin 2024, he has been disappointing, which really sucks because as you can see, he's a free agent in 2025. He's got to step it up and fast if he wants to get that bag. It's really weird to see Bo Bichette in a disappointing player video because he's usually one of the best contact hitters in baseball. And I will say the silver lining for Blue Jays fans Everyone is slumping, so it's only a matter of time before people break out. But the slump bug has now hit Bo Bichette. He's hitting 205 with the 62 OPS plus, and also he's been swinging at so many pitches outside the zone. The chase rate is really bad. He's got a 262 on base. That's not going to cut it for a guy who's a free agent in two years. He's got to pick it up too. Randy Arozarena, my guy. I love Randy, so I. I'm hoping that he turns it around, but good Lord, he is one of my most disappointing outfielders. We have two other guys coming up, so stay tuned for that. But Randy, when you're hitting 139, I know the counting stats are decent. He's on pace for like 25 home runs, 30 stolen bases, so yet another 2020 season. But I mean, he's not going to be a defensive wizard and a 34 OPS plus. That's bad. Nolan Jones is also one of my most disappointing players to begin the season, which sucks because, I mean, he's my friend. But I, I, I got I to gotta be objective, okay? A 43 OPS plus and a 170 batting average is not going to cut it. Also, defensively, his range is not the best. His arm is always going to be one of the best in baseball. Against lefties last year, he was really, really good. He was basically the same against righties. So no matter who you threw out there, he was going to rake. This year, he's a whole lot worse against lefties. But I'm thinking injuries are hampering him. He's on the IL right now with a back injury. He got hit by a pitch in spring. He came out of a game. He's going to be fine. The most disappointing outfielder of the season, it's not Nick Castellanos. This is kind of a Abreu and Torkelson situation. We don't really expect that much from Nick Castellanos anymore, at least I don't, because of what I've seen from him so far in his career as a Philly. But, I mean, defensively, I know he doesn't make errors, but his range stinks. His reads off the bat stink as well. He's got a 46 OPS plus, but he's not my most disappointing outfielder. I'm giving that to Corbin Carroll, who actually does have a positive war on the season, according to Bay baseball reference that's because he's got eight stolen bases he's been great defensively but the reigning nl rookie of the year has one home run he's hitting 197 and he has a 60 ops plus he's taking his walks from time to time so at least he has a near 300 on base percentage but this is not the corbin carroll that we saw last year and he's honestly not been very good since he had that shoulder injury so maybe just like cody bellinger it'd be stupid to write him off and he's just trying to get healthy my most disappointing dh to begin the season this one's fairly easy i know that mitch Garver does have three home runs, but the on-base stinks at 255. He's got a 63 OPS plus. I mean, Mariners fans are kind of used to people coming to the Mariners and getting worse, but he had a walk-off home run a few days ago. He's striking out a lot. Yeah, but he's Mitch Garver. He rakes. He's going to be okay. Michael King's got some very blue eyes. I feel like he's just staring into my soul, but 
Uh, Brian Cashman kind of cooked with this trade. Michael King has a five ERA, and the scary part is he's walking everyone. He went from a 2.8 walks per nine in 2023 to a 5.3 walks per nine this season. The hits are up, the home runs per nine are up, the strikeouts are down. So when you say the strikeouts are down and the walks are up, as well as the hits per nine, that's a rough start to the year. Michael King, he's disgusting. He's only 28, so my heart wants to say that he's going to be fine, but my head is like... What's going on with him? And then last but not least, this might look a little bit confusing because Advert has a 3.55 ERA, but so far he has more blown saves than saves. Yes, he's got the 3.55 ERA, but he only has 10 strikeouts and 12 and two thirds. So the whiff rate is down and he's blown four saves. So when you've blown four saves in what, 13 games, yeah, you're probably going to make the most disappointing players list. We're going to show the web gems in just a moment, but that does it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. I've not shown my face in, in like a month, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Round ball to the hole in short. Tough play for Pena. Found out in a double play, and that's a ground ball. Henderson to it. He'll take it to the base. <laughs> Jump throw. Photo with Diaz to come. Ground ball. Ahmed from the hole. Long throw. Line drive, caught. Ground, and came back down with the baseball. Into the batter's box. Rounded slowly toward third. Barehand play from Beatty, and...